Final Fantasy has always been a series for me where whenever I get the chance to play one, I usually love what I have played. But thanks to Square Enix providing me a game key, I had the opportunity to play Final Fantasy 16. So, of course, I was going to have to platinum it. After having Platinum Final Fantasy VII Remake earlier this year, I was ready for another challenging Platinum, but surprisingly, Final Fantasy XVI's Platinum experience is pretty straightforward and not too complicated at all. It's just a straight up good time. Before we start the Platinum, let's talk about the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Honkai Star Rail, a new space fantasy RPG from the makers of Genshin Impact. This is a cross-platform, free-to-play game that features a fully voice-acted story, as well as some very fun turn-based style combat. Now, I'm a sucker for turn-based games myself, and Honkai really is actually fun if you're into that style. There are multiple different characters you can play as, and they all have their own strengths and weaknesses which makes you have to strategize with your team composition to take on enemies in more efficient ways. I also personally find this game visually stunning, and so far I've been really enjoying the flashy animations and the music while fighting the enemies. The turn-based combat also allows you to easily play this game on your phone, so if you want to just lay in bed and grind some levels, you'd easily be able to do that. The game is out now with a brand new character, Luocha. Luocha is a foreign trader who always rescues people in times of danger with his medical skills. I personally think that his sword looks super sick. Check out the pinned comment or link in the description to download the game and try them out for yourself. And make sure to use the promo code on screen for 50 stellar jades. Thanks to Honkai for sponsoring this video. As I started the game for the first time, I was left with two options for difficulty, story mode or action mode. I decided to go with action mode as that seemed to be the hardest choice available. I eventually learned though that there would be an even harder difficulty that we'd have to complete after we beat the game for the first time. Now, we play the game as Clive Rossfield, a young teenager sworn to protect our little brother Joshua who has the power of the Phoenix and is the heir to the throne. During this first hour or so, it's a pretty standard experience. We learn how to fight in combat, we meet other important characters like our dad and Jill, who's the best, and we even embark on a mini quest with some friends to kill some goblins and even a giant morble. Pretty fun stuff, and everything is going smoothly. You're dead! <laughs> yes! That is, until late one night, our castle is being overrun by enemies, and Clive has to do everything that he can to protect his little brother Joshua. Our first major hurdle was this knight here, and while fighting him, I used my dash ability a total of 15 times, and we get our first trophy. Oh! No, our first trophy, man. What is this for? We landed 15 shift strikes, or shift shots. Yes. And now let's kick this guy's ass. Yes. Goodbye. And the knight is slain and we got our first trophy of the game. With so much chaos happening, Joshua activates his powers and turns into the phoenix. Meanwhile, Clive witnesses a mysterious figure in the distance turn into Ifrit, and Joshua and Ifrit have a crazy icon boss fight. Seriously, the best part of this game is all of these icon boss battles we're gonna eventually have. They're always just such a visual treat. Oh my god. Dude, this is crazy. This is nuts, man. What the heck is going on? There's so much going on. I can't even tell what's happening on the screen, dude. What? Damnation in five, four. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to see what that was. Oh, wow. <laughs> there is so much flashing on the screen. I can't even tell what's happening. This is crazy. While playing as Joshua as the Phoenix, we eventually lose, and Joshua is seemingly killed by Ifrit. Defeated, Clive then finds out his own mother is behind the invasion, and we are taken in as a slave for 13 years. The only thing Clive cares about at this point is revenge for whoever killed his brother. From here is where the game actually starts, and we get our first story-based trophy. Awoken. So we rise from our reverie. That was the intro to the game. Oh my God, dude.
That was insane. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I. I can't believe, like, I'm actually speechless. That was crazy. If that's the intro of the game, I am so excited for the rest of the game. Holy crap. We eventually come across Jill, who we haven't seen in 13 years. Turns out she is Shiva's dominant and she's being controlled by Clive's mother. And of course, we have to fight her before she can join our party. So while we're fighting her, we get another trophy for punishing enemies a certain number of times, which basically just means I hit them while they were on the ground. After fighting Jill, we have the opportunity to rescue her, but we get surrounded by enemies. Luckily, Ramu's dominant, Sid, comes to save us. Now, Sid is probably one of my favorite side characters in this game. He's just super cool and badass, plus his voice actor is amazing. I'd always pictured you as more of the chocobo type. Clive Rosfield. Sid takes us to our first home base, essentially, where we can use a blacksmith to craft gear and a shop to buy weapons or potions or whatever. Now, I'm going to be honest, for my first playthrough, I barely interacted with any of these two shops. I just never had a need to upgrade any of my weapons or buy anything, as this game is honestly pretty easy. Now, after I'm done with the hideout, I set out with Sid to go find the one responsible for killing Joshua. Our adventures lead us into a forest where I eventually come across this rogue type boss. He was pretty quick, but I was ready for the challenge. Oh, what? He's going crazy. He's going absolutely wild. Oh my god. Midnight Raven, calm down. Calm down. Oh! Oh, he's stunned. Oh, staggered. Absolutely staggered. Mess him up. Mess him up. This is crazy. Square. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do it. Please. That was so sick. <laughs> oh my god, what the heck? Whoa, what's this? You're not the boss of me. Defeat a boss without taking damage. Hey. You know, it's all in a day's work, boys and girls. It's all in a day's work. After some time, we come across our first main villain of the game, Benedicta. Now, she's honestly a really cool villain, and she's also the dominant for Garuda. As we make our way to her, she sends some of her harpy minions to attack us. Now, I easily dispose of these minions, but during the fight, we get a trophy for using Torgal's sick ability a certain amount of times. I finally made it to Benedicta, and it was time to fight her while she was in her Garuda form. Now, this fight was actually really fun. Nice. Doing some damage. What the heck is that? I don't like that. A tornado? Yeah, no thanks. Get out of here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No thanks. No thanks. Oh my god. Chill. Lady, chill out. Holy crap, dude. She's insane. She's actually insane. She's insane. <laughs> oh, no. Leave me alone. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Nice. She's almost done, man. So close. What the heck? Oh my god, there's so many... There's so many tornadoes. Oh my god! Oh my god. What the heck is happening? I can't even tell what's happening. Get out of here, lady. 
You psycho. She's almost dead. Pepper with fireballs. Pepper with fireballs. Oh, she's going crazy. She's going crazy. I can't tell what's happening. Oh my god. Please. Do it. Yes. Oh my gosh, she's crazy. <laughs> what a crazy fight, man. Holy crap. With Benedicta defeated, we learn that we can absorb her Garuda powers and essentially just take those powers for ourselves. Doing so gives us a trophy for unlocking a new icon and we continue to progress into the game. Now, the game basically opens up starting from this point, so I take some time to explore and complete some side quests. By the way, there are a ton of side quests starting from this point, and of course, I'll have to do all of them to platinum this game. I'll comment more on those side quests later though. Along with exploring the world, I make sure to craft five pieces of gear for a trophy. Now we are back on the hunt for the mysterious figure that killed Joshua. We find him and he leads us to this underground ruin area that kind of reminds me of Dwarven Ruins from Skyrim. I don't know how it does, it just does, don't judge me. It was in this area that I realized I could start playing this game like Devil May Cry 5, which is an amazing game by the way, and air juggle enemies with Garuda's abilities. Doing so gave me a trophy. Hey, look at that, a trophy, what is this? five enemies in the air after using a deadly embrace. I'm getting better at those air combos. I'm starting to slowly figure it out. We finally rolled up on the man that was Ifrit, only to realize that we were the ones that were actually turned into Ifrit that night that Joshua died. And now we're having like a very Zelda moment where we have to fight the dark link of ourselves. And it's only until we accept the truth, which is one of the most badass moments of this game, that we can finally kick our own ass. Oh my God, now I have devil trigger. Yes. How strong am I? Oh my god, I'm tearing through his... Tearing through his stagger gauge. Oh, yeah. We are crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm doing crazy combos. Oh, it's a titan battle. Yes. Oh, we're battling. Which one am I? Punch him in the face. Oh. <laughs> sure you can. This is crazy. That was sick as hell, man. Never got the trophy. We accepted our fate. That was crazy. Super cool. Now, with Sid in our party, our goal is to destroy the Mother Crystal in this area in hopes to stop the blight that has been spreading because of it. We get to the crystal and we destroy it after a couple of boss battles, but Sid dies in the process due to this new enemy that shows up, who is Ultima. He's basically going to be the big bad guy of the game from here on out, the evil force that we have to stop. You know, like your typical Final Fantasy story. Luckily, somehow, Joshua is still alive, which I don't know if they ever explained this maybe you guys can tell me in the comments and he seals ultima inside of himself which allows us to escape now five years later we have taken on the role of sid and our goal is to make our way across the land and destroy all the remaining mother crystals so that we can finally stop this incoming blight this basically means we're gonna be making our way through a bunch of badass boss battles one at a time for trophies while working on any miscellaneous trophies that we can along the way if I'm going to be running around the open world, I'm going to need a mount because running on foot sounds like a nightmare. So I pick up a side quest that is super quick, like just basically kill some bad guys. And my reward is I unlock a chocobo mount. Now I'm adventuring in style. Yeah. We got a chocobo. <laughs> oh, this is great.
Shortly after, I unlock Monster Hunts for the first time. These are actually one of my favorite additions to this game. I essentially just pick up hunts from the hunt board in town and slay big monsters for rewards. I'll have to eventually do all 32 of these in the game for a trophy, but for now, I just do a couple of them and get a feel for it. Now it's time to destroy the second mother crystal. While making my way towards the second mother crystal, I get a trophy for attacking enemies that have been struck with my Ramu lightning bolts. Oh, nice. What's this? Discharge 50 blind justice lightning balls. Heck yeah, man. There's going to be a ton of these miscellaneous combat trophies that I'll be unlocking as I gain access to new icons. Now, this mother crystal is blocked by a big fiery demon thing, so of course we gotta take him out. Luckily, Jill is helping me as Shiva, so this fight was a breeze. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a twofer dodge. That's twofer. Eleventh hour? What does that mean? What are you doing? What is that? What the heck? What the heck is going on? Oh, what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, what the heck is happening? Oh, there's so many of them. Jesus. What do I do? Do I fight all of them at one time? No, I don't. I'm just on fire. I can't even tell what's happening right now. There's so many things happening on the screen. He needs to calm down. He's actually going too crazy right now. You're going too hardcore in the paint. Yeah, stagger him. You're not doing that. Not right now. Take a tornado to the face. And a limit break. There's so much happening on the screen. He's dead. Okay. <laughs> there's just... There's so much going on. You know, fire, wind, limit breaks. Okay, so we took down the Mother Crystal, the second one. At this point, I was just rolling through this game. Like I said earlier, this Platinum is pretty straightforward, so I just continue my way through the story, defeating bosses, and essentially stealing the boss's icon powers. Basically, after every big boss fight is a trophy, but if I showed you all the fights, this video would be like two hours long. I do really want to highlight some boss fights, though, that stood out to me along the way. The first being the Bahamut fight. This fight was insane. Bahamut has, like, three phases, and there's just so much going on the screen at all times. I couldn't believe what I was watching at some points. Granted, there are a lot of quick time events in these icon fights, but I don't really care. It's just so cool to look at. <laughs> this is crazy. Dude. <laughs> what the heck, man? Oh, we're still playing. We're playing. We're playing. I'm just getting lost in the sauce. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. There's a lot of colors on the screen. I can't tell what's happening, but it looks really cool. Square. Square for the win. Come on. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Another really awesome fight that I enjoyed was the Odin fight. Throughout this story, this Barnabas character has the power of Odin, and he just destroys people. He even literally splits open an ocean with his sword. It's so cool, and his fight was also great. And a definite highlight of the game for me, personally. Oh, get dodged. Oh, get countered and dodged. Oh, he's countered again. Oh, man, you hate to see it, don't you, Barnabas? What the heck is this? Oh, my God, he's blue. That's not a good sign. I don't think being blue is a good sign. Oh, my God, you're so slow, dude. Imagine being this slow. Imagine. Like, actually imagine. That's not good. That's not good. I don't know what that means. Uh, okay. He's huge. Oh my god. Counter. Every time we get the counter, he just disappears. He's cheating. He's actually cheating. He's a cheater. He's actually a cheater.
Does anyone else know what's happening? Because I sure don't. I can... Oh, he's staggered. Okay. I was just about to say, I cannot see a gosh dang thing. And he's going to die right about now. Any second now. Any second. There we go. <laughs> And now, like I mentioned earlier, along the way, there are a ton of miscellaneous combat trophies I unlocked after stealing everyone's new icon powers. Examples were like blocking 10 attacks with my Titan powers, having an enemy hit my electric traps, or even hitting an enemy with mega players. You get the picture. Just a ton of miscellaneous combat trophies that I pretty much just unlocked by playing. Yo, nice. Such dodge, so mega. What a dumb trophy name, dude. Oh my god. Ridiculous. I even continued to work on those hunts from earlier as much as I could. And when I completed 10 of them, I got a trophy for doing so. And that's another one. There's another trophy. Defeat 10 Notorious Marks. Oh my god, dude. This turtle is giving me three trophies. <laughs> Another really cool feature this game has is when you're making your way through the story, you can talk to this bookkeeper and he'll level up as you progress. He's really helpful for keeping track of enemies and locations because there is a ton of lore in this game. It's actually kind of insane and for me, at times, it was really hard to keep track of everybody. So this was a nice addition. And once I leveled him up to level 5, I got another trophy for that. Now, while I'm working on all these trophies, I make sure to pet the best boy in the game, Torgal, five times for a trophy. I mean, he's been working hard. He deserves it. You can pet the dog. <laughs> Good job, Torgal. We killed a goo man. Heck yeah. So at this point, I'm really close to finishing up my first playthrough. But before I can take on the final boss, there's a few more things I need to accomplish. First, I need to do all the side quests in this game. Now, there are a total of 76 side quests in this game. And I'm going to be real with you guys. This was probably my least favorite part of this Platinum. I don't know if it was just me, but I found these side quests to just be so boring. I think it's mostly because the main quests are just so action-packed that the side missions just really slowed down the pace of the game for me. Either way, I grinded my way through all these missions, but it was worth it as they awarded me multiple trophies. For a lot of the side quests, when you finish them, they will give you an item that goes into Clive's room for his collection. I'm going to need to complete this collection later on for a different trophy. But one of these items you get is a signboard that when I collect six of, by doing certain side missions, I get a trophy as well. You also get quests given to you through in-game letters, which allows me to eventually open 10 letters total for a trophy. And by doing all the side missions, it took me to every area on the map, which in itself is another trophy. I also needed to complete all of the hunts at this point. Most of these were pretty simple, but my favorites were the S rank hunts. These were absolutely wild. At times, these were even pretty challenging as I could be like seven levels below the monster I was hunting. Like I said before, the hunts were like one of my favorite parts of this game and the S rank battles were an absolute blast to play through. Uppercut him. Yes. We cleared the hunt board. Doing all the hunts and the side missions also gave me the max amount of renown I could acquire in the game. With your renown, you can go to this patron here and acquire upgrades. And once I got all the upgrades that were to be had here, I got a trophy. Also, with all the side missions and hunts now completed, I was able to upgrade my potions to their max healing and slot capacity. Oh, look at that. Upgrade consumable potency and inventory slots to their maximum. Upgrade our potions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sometimes all these side quests are worth it. Holy crap, that was like two hours of just side questing. It's worth it though. Trophies. It's all for the trophies. As well as craft one of the best swords in the game. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Big upgrade. Let's craft this thing. No scratches. Right. There we go. And we got the half past Twilight trophy. Craft the legendary sword. Goddardamarung. Is that how you say it? I have no idea. We're going to equip it, though. Heck yeah, dude. I was only missing one more item from my collection in Clive's room. 
To get the last item, I needed to complete seven time trials found throughout the world's map. In these trials, you have the abilities of a certain icon, and you need to kill enemies as fast as possible in order to clear the trial before time runs out. Now, if you do certain moves or combos, your timer will be increased, which helps immensely. I wish I could say that like these were super difficult, but they really weren't, and I found myself usually having a ton of time left over to spare. Completing my first time trial gave me a trophy, and after about an hour of grinding through these, I had finally completed all seven of them, and I got the last collectible item for Clive's room. And there we go! Yes, we got all the curiosities. We're doing all the side missions and the hunts and that trial thing that we just did. Making some progress. Feels good. Feels good. That platinum is in sight. To celebrate having finally beat all the side content in this game, I bought a couple of rounds at the local pub with the intention of spending around 40,000 gil for a trophy. A pretty simple task as all I had to do was buy a round four times for 10,000 gil each. Luckily, I'm drowning in gil at this point because I had literally just solved everyone's problems in this area. There were also two more combat trophies I needed to get that I hadn't gotten while naturally playing the game. These were definitely the trickiest out of all of them. For one of them, I had to use all of Garuda's moves while in mid-air. And this can only be accomplished after you have spent enough ability points to master a move so that you can place it on a different icon's ability bar. Once I had figured that out, my only issue was actually completing the challenge. This is it right here. Oh no. There it is, never coming down. Nice. The last combat trophy was for using Odin's sword to counter three times in one battle. Now this was supposed to be easy, so of course I struggled at it. Okay, so we need to perform three steel counters in this battle. Basically I have to equip this big ass Odin sword and just hit this guy and parry him. See what we do right here. Nope. Hit. That didn't work. Oh, God. There it is. So there's one. All right. There's one steel counter. Let's get two more. Oh, God. I only got the timing down. Come on. Oh. <laughs> okay. There's two. Nice. Let me just get one more of these. One more. Here it is. There we go. That's three steel counters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now it was time for the final boss fight against Ultima, the big bad guy of this game. Once I had finally beat him, my first playthrough would be finally finished. His final form. Oh yeah, he's got a helmet on. That's how you know it's his final form. Oh, oh okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. He just. Gra oh my god, he just grabbed me. Whoa. Oh, he's got Garuda's. Oh, I see what's. Oh my god. He's got Garuda's powers. I gotta get a Sagger off. Here we go. Gotta get the Sagger off. Gotta get the uppercut. Definitely gotta punch him in the face right now. Whoa, 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 what the heck? What are we doing here, huh? Uh, I think I just countered that. That was pretty. Sh oh, okay, nope. Definitely did not counter that. Oh my god, the potion just saved my life. Come on, get staggered. I can't even tell what's happening. There's just so much going on the screen. There's so much happening. Get staggered. Come here. Take that. And take this punch to the face. Oh, you're going down, dude. Oh, that's good. Pull him. Do it. Do it, Clive. Uppercut. The world you seek is the fantasy! A final fantasy? The only fantasy here is yours. 
and we shall be its final witness. Its final witness. Get it? Final man. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa. I said. It's over. Oh, nice. Square. Yeah. Yes. That was so cool. What the hell, man? That was awesome. Oh, man. This game. So badass. That's so badass. There we go. We've beat the game for the first time. Man. What a crazy storyline, dude. Those boss fights are insane. Like, actually <laughs> insane. With the first playthrough done, I only needed three more trophies for the Platinum. The first was beating the game on Final Fantasy mode, which is essentially hard mode, which we unlocked for beating the game once. In this mode, enemies have increased strength, your level cap now raises to 100 instead of 50, and there's even new gear and items to collect. In my first playthrough, I honestly didn't even die once, and I found this game to be too easy at times. So I was excited for a harder challenge this time around. But to be honest, this mode wasn't even that much harder. The only thing that I seemed to notice was that enemies now had a ton of health, which basically made it take forever to kill them. I also just skipped all of the cutscenes and the side quests to breeze through this difficulty, and I found myself enjoying the game overall less this time around. Unlike in Final Fantasy VII Remake, where the hard mode added an extra fun challenge for me, this game's hard mode just felt like a slog to get through at times for me personally. After about 10 hours of just blasting through the story, I made it to Ultima again and took him out without any issues. Even though I was way under level from skipping side missions, I never once struggled on this second playthrough. This is it. Hard mode is in the bag. Oh, yeah. Fantasy, finally. Now, the last two trophies were all for maxing out my ability points. The first one was easy. I just maxed out a single icon's ability points for a trophy. I then had to max out all the other icons points for the very last trophy. Now after playing the game twice, I wasn't too far off, so I just needed to find a spot to farm points. I went to the final area of the game and I would just basically kill these dogs in this spot here over and over again for about a thousand ability points every 60 seconds or so. Funnily enough, this was the only time I actually had to grind in this game, which is weird for a Final Fantasy game. And it was at the very end of my playthrough. After grinding this dog farm for about an hour while watching Netflix, of course. I finally had enough points for the very last trophy. Okay, and with that, we should have enough points to get all the abilities. I've been on the grind for like an hour. <laughs> Not too bad considering other grinds I've done for Platinums, but still, pretty boring. Um, all right, let's see. I should be able to buy the last of these abilities and the Platinum will be mine, so let's do it. This is the last one for this. And this should be the last one for this and the platinum. Let's do it. There we go. So master class, all the abilities are max. And with that, we have the platinum trophy for Final Fantasy 16. Oh my god. This game took me a long time to do. But was this was really fun, man. Great game. Very, very flashy. Very cinematic. What a blast. What an absolute blast. And there we have it guys, the Platinum Trophy for Final Fantasy 16. Overall, I had a great time with this and I'd recommend this game to anyone looking for an absolutely insane cinematic action experience. According to PlayStation, this took me about 68 hours to Platinum. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and if you want to see more, check out my Final Fantasy 7 Remake Platinum video right here. Thank you so much for watching.